<laughs> so then we get to this scenario where now it's probably four or five months now and I only wanted to be staying with sis for maybe a couple of months month and a half too and I've already been there five months now not to go into any details but things started to progress where I was staying and pretty much the, the owner of the house actually sold the house and I had to be out so now I'm even more stressed because I'm working this job that I can't stand the weather is kicking my ass I don't like the job I'm not making enough of money I feel like I'm spinning my wheels I'm only doing it because I have to the camper is not ready I am nowhere where I wanted to be I just feel like I feel like my whole world is closing in on me and I can't dig myself out of this hole so in the end everything begins to be real stressful for every for every party Rick finally me and Rick get together and we finish the camper and, and y'all guys will see that fantastic job fantastic job Rick did I, I, I couldn't have done it without it fantastic job he did did a damn good job of, of sealing that front end and we get it sealed and that part's done and now it's just a matter of me you know cleaning up screwing in the window tidying up some things here and there and then it's like everything happened all at once with me where <coughs> it was like okay you got to get out we got to move the camper up to there luckily about two weeks earlier I had went out to this place where I'm currently staying where the camper is right now and got a site ahead of time because I thought I was going to be there two weeks ahead of time and I, I wasn't so I had a site. So then we had to, to uh, you know, put air in the tires and, and hook up the camper and pull it down to my new location. <laughs> Mom will tell you that was an interesting trip in itself, just getting it to where it needed to go. That entire time frame was just stressful. We get in here and the electricity works, the air conditioning works, thank Jesus, because it's been starting to get a hundred three-digit temperatures here in, in the summers now it's in August and we hook up the water the water works but there's a leak okay so now what I have to do is I have to find another way to take care of water sources inside the camper so what I do what I'm going to have to do, and, and Mom and Rick both suggested this, and, and this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to have to take five gallon bucket showers, and I'm going to. Sh and there's a video I'm going to do about that to show y'all exactly what I have to do. And a lot of you are looking at me crazy, but let me tell you something right now. Um, you're sitting in your fancy houses and your elaborate, you know, sprinkler systems and your beautiful bathrooms and all of this stuff, and that's great. You know, I've been there, had a nice apartment had the nice place living in Phoenix all of that but when you don't have that stuff and you have to do something else you will do it to get it done or you'll do without one or the two so I get the camper here and we deal with all of that and I still have the water issue that still has to be fixed we get the, the, the camper situation here, and I have a place to stay with a roof over my head that is mine. I'm not living with somebody else. <clears throat> I don't feel like I'm not going anywhere. I, 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 I'm starting to feel like something's happening now. Something's moving. I've been here six months, and I feel like something's now starting to move. Well, at that very moment, and other people don't know this because it just kind of happened, I did talk to sis about this um, at that point in time I said to myself I feel like I have control of my life again the the five months that I've been here I felt like I didn't have any control over my life 
I couldn't, I, I, I had no control of decisions or what I wanted to do or how I wanted to do it. I, I was just going by the mercy of Oklahoma. Once I got in this camper and it was mine, I had the keys. I had a place to stay. This was a place for me and my little buddy Aces, which y'all can't see his cages right here, or his his kennel, which he absolutely loves. Um, I I then felt like I had control of my life again, that I can make decisions. That very weekend, that was a Sunday. That Monday, I did a lot of heavy thinking about a number of things. But the most important thing at the time was the job that I had. Monday morning, I got up, I got dressed, I picked up the phone, I called Sis, and I told her because on, on uh, I have a company van, all the company equipment, I had, had you know, extra company equipment at mom's that I was storing. All this stuff is belongs to the company. So at that morning, at that Tuesday morning I got up, I, I decided that, you know what, I'm done. I don't have to work at this place. I don't want to work it anymore. I have control of my life again. I feel like I got control of it again. I don't got to do this no more. I'm done. So... I call my boss, I tell him, you know what, today's my last day. I'm gonna get the van together, get all the equipment stuff, and I'm driving up to Tulsa to drop it off to you. Uh, he seemed a little upset. He's like, okay, cool. See you when you get here. I have, again, thank you, sis. She was very busy that day, but she made time towards the later evening to um, come up and pick me up from Tulsa and drive me back to, uh, to Scipio. So thank you again, sis, for that. I truly appreciate that. But I got up that morning and I quit. And I quit because I had control again. I've not had control of, the, of my situation here in Oklahoma since I got here. I thought I did for a number of months, but I didn't. And that made me feel a little bit better. So, I was no longer going to put myself, to force myself to do something that I just did not want to do. Now, let me talk to you about this job. So this is with a certain satellite company. I was at Install Tech. And you can put two and two together, but you have to work in all conditions. I'm going to give you two scenarios, and the second scenario is the one that really made me think. There was a day I was out there. Now, you have to be out there in all weather. Rain, sleet, snow, heat, doesn't matter. It was a day I had a job in McAllister. It was a three box. I went out, did all the, you know, spent about four hours outside doing the install outside. Satellite, running the lines, all that stuff. Went inside and went to go hook up everything. Now... The entire time, this entire time up there, from the moment I got in that van from the house to the moment I got to the customer's place, the entire four hours I was outside doing the hookup, it was pouring down rain. I was soaked from my head to my toe. No lie, I felt like I had galoshes on. There was water in every crevice of my body. Shoes, you name it. I got in after four hours of hooking it up in the rain, the pouring down rain. Got inside, hooked up the receiver, it sparked. Turns out there was an electrical problem on the inside. After two more hours of troubleshooting, turns out that I could not eat, and I don't get paid for that job because it got canceled. The person had an electrical problem that had to be fixed and we couldn't do the install. So I spent six hours in the pouring down rain and I didn't even get paid for that job. That was the only job I did that day. And if you know anything about the satellite installation uh, folks out there, you get paid more money by the amount of jobs you do. And I know you guys out there, oh, three bucks, you should be quicker than that. I just started. 
So that was one instance. And, and here's the other instance here that made me think about make me make the decision that I had to make. I had this one week where, you know, dispatch couldn't find me any jobs. They find me jobs and the jobs ended up getting canceled because the person wasn't home. I couldn't find them. They weren't answering the phone. It was a situation where I was, as you know, all week and I get to this Saturday where I just spent the first four hours in the morning and there's no jobs for me. They finally get me a job and it's a commercial job. Whatever. Okay. Send me out to that thing. It's blazing hot that day. I don't know how hot it was, but it was hot. I had to get up on this flat roof to install a satellite, a non-pin. I get up there and that's when things start to go wrong. It's hot. I'm up here with my, my fellow co-worker and he's dialing in the satellite and I'm down there with him and I stand up real quick and I get real dizzy and I feel that and I, back, I get back down on my knees. I'm like, okay, that was odd. So I wait about five minutes. I get back up again, do the same thing, get dizzy back on my knees. He looks at me and goes, man, you don't look good. I say, no, I don't feel good. Something's not right, man. I'm, I'm, I'm getting dizzy every time I stand up. So what I had to do was I had to get up in increments. Otherwise, I'd pass out. So I ended up getting down from the roof, going out to the van. And as I was going out to the van, I didn't feel good at all. I had a headache. I never get headaches. Never. If I get a headache, your ass is grass because I'm whipping somebody's ass. I never get headaches. <laughs> I think the last person that gave me a headache was my ex-wife. There's a joke in there somewhere. But anyway, I had headaches. I had chills, uh, I was dizzy, my legs felt like noodles, I had completely stopped sweating. I was having a, a, uh, I was having a heat exhaustion episode, didn't know it. So I'm sitting on the side of the truck, drinking water, trying to stay cool. I realized I need to get up and sit in the van and turn the air conditioning on. <clears throat> when I get up, I have to go around the van and when I do to get into the van, I feel like my legs are noodles. So I sit in the van. Long story short, we finished the job. I call my soup, tell him what's going on. I got home that day. He says, go home, don't do nothing. Just relax. I get home. I didn't feel good. I got up the next morning. I was still dizzy. I still had a headache. So I had to take another day off. Guys, that was a that was a serious situation. I felt like I was gonna die that day. And if you guys have ever had a serious case of heat exhaustion, you know exactly how that feels. I've been hiking for almost eight years now. And I can't ever remember an instance where I had heat exhaustion. Because I was smart about what I did. But that day I was not. Apparently I wasn't drinking enough. I wasn't drinking Gatorade, stuff I should have been doing. And it caught up with me. In my mind, I thought, what happens the next time? Will there be a next time? Will this be worse the next time? Will I be able to, to, to catch this like I did the last time? At that point, I felt like the job was a danger to me. So I didn't want to be in this job anyway. I took the route that was best for me. I took the route that I had control over again. Again, I had control of my life. So I said, fuck it, I'm done.